Good morning, Lord's Church. So great to have all of you here this morning. You're going to get to exercise your legs now. Get up, give each other a hug. I love watching you as you share in the love of Christ with each other on Sunday mornings. Good morning, good morning, my darling. Yes, I didn't see her. Doesn't that feel wonderful? If you had not already been hugged this morning, doesn't that feel wonderful to receive a hug and the love of a Christian brother or sister? Now I need you to sit back down. First announcement this morning uh, is that your bulletin is incorrect. So stay awake. Stay, stay awake. It wasn't Donna. It wasn't Donna. We changed, we changed it just this morning. So stay awake and keep on track to know what's going on so you'll know when to stand up and when to sit down. Uh, ladies, for those of you who are in, in the Tuesday morning Bible study, this week we will be meeting at Marge Carpenter's home, 1020 Eagle Drive. That's Tuesday at 930. So we will see you there. Okay. Um, Pastor Joe will now come and make an announcement. Good morning, Lord's Church. So nice to see you. This is a day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, Amen. First announcement that I want to make is actually an announcement that Ken and Linda Bentz wanted to share with your church, her church family. They thank you very much for all the help and the kind words and the compassion and just caring for them during the loss of their home. It's still in the process as to what should be done or will be done with their home. They're still evaluating all of that. Um, and many people have asked us, have asked me and the other pastors, what can we do? And my answer to you is, I do not know. You ask Ken and Linda, okay? We just pray for them during this time. This is an adjustment time for them, but we know that they will be blessed in many ways. We always are when things happen to us. So let's pray for them right now. Almighty God, we just lift the Bences to you. We know this has been a traumatic time, and we pray that you surround them with your peace, and wisdom and discernment and how best to go forward in this situation. They love you very much and we know you love them. So empower them to uh, continue um, to go the direction that you have always led them. And they depend on you, their faith is very strong. We pray this in Jesus name, amen. Amen. Now the other thing that uh, I guess we'll just Pray one more time about starting our service, all right? Almighty God, we just come to you always with praise and thanksgiving, and we ask that you send that Holy Spirit to us. We are here standing on your holy ground. We are here to worship and to praise you and everything we say and do. So open our hearts and our minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to now continue with a brief memorial service for Pastor Mu. Uh, she certainly has been a loss to us. Uh, she radiated. She radiated positive thinking. Have you ever seen anybody more positive than Pastor Mu? And also, it was due to her faith. She knew that her Jesus was going to take care of her, whether it was financial or cars or health, whatever it was, she trusted that God would follow through and take care of her. And he certainly did. When I think of Pastor Moo, I think of this 
scripture, and it's from Matthew 25, 21. Jesus would tell Pastor Mo this, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things, and I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. And the master's happiness for Mu was eternal life in God's kingdom forever and ever. And we have the peace and knowledge that that's exactly where she is. I want to tell you just a little bit about Pastor Mo. This is a little gal that had lived in the park for quite a while. And one day I happened to notice this energetic little bunny coming into the worship service. And no matter what was being done, she was there to say, I'll help, I'll do this, I'll do that. Uh, she wanted to go caroling, but she didn't have a cart. Well, we'll take care of that. Uh, Rose Kalinowski had a play, well, she would be in the play. Uh, we started, Roy started the praise team. She was in the praise team. And the, the praise team used to meet at her house on Eagle. I loved it because I loved hearing them sing because I can't sing. So I loved it. It was very peaceful. One day after the praise team, she said, can I talk to you for a little bit? And I said, yeah. So she sat and we chatted for a bit. And she says, I want to tell you about my background. Okay. I mean... You've been in the park for quite a while, but I don't know anything about you. And she said, well, I have a master's in theology. You have what? <laughs> a master's in theology. I've been a missionary overseas, Iran, Iraq, and some of those countries. I've written books, one on Jane Austen. I'm a travel agent. The list went on and on. And I said, and you kept this a secret from me, why? And she said, I just wanted to be sure the church was okay. So now I want you to know, I'll do anything you want me to do. And that was Pastor Mo. So we brought her on board and she was a saint and a worker for the Lord. Amen. She led many groups for the pastors and for our congregation. So if, you knew her and you saw the things that she said and did. She's the model that you and I need to follow. So follow her as a model. She's looking down upon us. I have no doubt about that. So thank you. I wanted to share those words about her and now uh, Pastor Roy is going to come forward. Ah, here comes Pastor Mu. She's walking up the, the, the aisle right over there and big smile on her face. And you look at her and she would look at you and she would just embrace you. And the, the love, you could see the twinkle in her eyes. And, and amazing, you know, I'm uh, not particularly uh, well educated, but Wow, she just blew me away after what uh, Pastor just said. And I could, I think I learned just the way she approached people, the way she talked to people. And it was just with a loving kindness. And Jean and I just always uh, decided that uh, we would like to be following her footsteps when regarding following the Lord. And what a difference she's made in our lives. Well, I have a little story. We, Jean and I, on Easter Sunday, we um, were going on a cruise. So we came to the service, of course, and we left straight away. And we went down to get in our cart. And as I was going to get in the cart, and I was driving by then, so I was on the driver's side, um, this little red car came right next to, right up next to me in the next slot. And um, I was about to get in the cart and the door opened and I looked and there was this little lady, like a little old lady. And he suddenly realized it was Pastor Moo. And I said, Pastor Moo, what are you doing here? She says, has the service done? Have you had the service yet? The Easter service yet? I said, yeah, it's finished, Moo. It's, it's all finished. And 
she looked frail. She looked, she didn't look like Mu. And it was devastating and I couldn't understand what she was doing here. And she'd driven from Tampa in this car in the condition that she was in to come to the Easter service. She wanted to be with us. She wanted to be here. And she missed the service, poor girl. So we said, well, you okay then? Is everything all right? She looked tottery. So anyway, Jean and I said, are you going in? You want to go up to the clubhouse? She said, yes, she could, could hardly walk at that point. So we got one on each side of her. Because we were near the ramp coming up by the pool there, we literally, it felt like we dragged her up there. She couldn't really. And we brought her into those uh, two doors down the corner. And people from the service were hanging around down the bottom there by the kitchen. And we brought her in. And if you remember, Pastor, you saw her and you greeted her. And I don't, I believe you didn't believe it was her. What was she doing here? And unfortunately, Jean and I had to get going. We were going on a cruise and we had to get moving. But the daughters didn't know that she had driven. <laughs> she took it upon herself to get in that little car of hers and drive down here. And I'll always remember that. And what, a, what an amazing woman that she was determined. And that's the kind of person she was. She was determined to do what she wanted to do and what she did do all of her life. So, Mu, there she is. Look at that smile right there. Come and see that picture if you can't see it from back there. And see the love in her face. And Mu, we love you. And we thank you for being in our lives and showing us the way to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. For those of you who knew Mu, you knew that she had a gentle, quiet spirit that uplifted you, that was there to give you a word of assurance, always a word of scripture. I often told her that it didn't matter how many years I will live. I could never know the scripture just by recall that that wonderful lady had. What you may not know about her is that she also was a master wordsmith. If there were any documents that we needed proofed, give them to Mu. She knew exactly where to put a comma, when to finish your run-on sentence. And she would very frankly tell you what you had done wrong. I was proofing a document yesterday, and oh, how I wished for her wordsmithing abilities. She also led us once, we had a retreat, and she led in a personality assessment. Mu was excellent at the skills of, of recognizing people's gifts, their strengths, and their weaknesses and encouraging growth in all of those areas. As much as we miss Moo, I know that she would not trade that place that she is enjoying right now that the Her Lord prepared for her to come back here and be with us. But Moo, we miss you. We thank you for the time we were privileged to share with you. And now are there any others who would like to speak to Moo's life? Please come forward. <clears throat> Moo not only had a master's degree in theology, she had a master's degree in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, a love chapter. I had the privilege of going on several visits with her. Uh, somehow we found out that we like to visit people and she, I said, I'll go with you. So we went to hospice a couple of times and uh, on the way and coming home, she told her missionary stories to me. So I got to hear some of her um, adventures with Jesus. And, um, 
And then um, if we were in Auburndale, we stopped for ice cream because she did like ice cream too. So I'm gonna miss Moo. Moo and I had something in common on our passports, country of birth, Canada, and yet somehow we immigrated to the US and became citizens here. Um, so we would kibitz back and forth about the differences or the similarities between Canada and the US, and there are a few. I was envious of several things, her travels, her grasp of the English language that has already been alluded to, she never spoke pedestrian English. She spoke at a university level, and she would use words like drollery, proffering, and pomposity. You had to carry your dictionary in one hand, but I loved it. I always learned something from her. She had an infectious, boisterous laugh, and that beautiful contralto voice. Contralto is the lowest range of a female voice, and sometimes we had to move her from alto to bass in the coraliers because we were short of the men that could sing bass. Above all was her unwavering faith. One of her favorite authors was William Cowper from the 1700s, and William wrote, and I quote, my soul rejoices to pursue the steps of him I love, till glory breaks upon my view in brighter worlds above. And I know as she took her flight to that brighter world above, because of his grace, she couldn't wait for his embrace. Amen. Amen. Anthony, you now have something to share. Yes, this is only Anthony from the sidelines. You can't see me, but you can hear me. I'm going to switch the screen because I want you to concentrate on the screen as I will show you a personal memory of Moo, another side of her that you may or may not remember. This was when I was playing Tony and she was playing Maria from West Side Story and we sang the very short song that's in that scene where Tony and Maria are betrothing their love to one another. That was another side of Muriel that I personally enjoyed, and that's my personal reflection of Pastor Muriel Evans. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Anthony. Is there anyone else who'd like to share? I'm going to talk about Moo in a totally different um, setting, not within the church or preaching or anything like that, but rather playing water volleyball. 
who loved to play water volleyball. And that can be attested to by our friend over here. Moo loved water volleyball. She came every day and she had this big grin on her face, was happy as could be, um, was not very good. <laughs> but then again, we're in a 55 plus community. How many women are gonna be good at water volleyball? Um, but she was one of the worst. <laughs> And I was probably next. But that's how we got to meet Mo. We did not know that she was pastor at the time. Um, but she was always, always smiling. She never got upset no matter what, no matter who teased her about anything. Um, I don't remember exactly what you used to tease her and call her, but she loved it. Some crazy Canadian or something, I don't know, something like that. Canadian. Can Canadian. But um, she was just fun. She really was fun. So it was a different side of her. But it was actually, it was a wonderful part of her. She was not only the pastor and the teacher, but she was so much fun to be with, fun loving. And I think that's the part of Mo that I will remember the most, having fun with her and laughing. Thank you, Marian. Why don't we end this part of our, the, our service in prayer? Father, we thank you for your child, Muriel, and allowing us to be a part of her life as she walked it on this earth. We thank you for her ministry among us. We thank you for her love among us. We thank you for the memories that she leaves behind. And Lord, we thank you that we and her family have the absolute assurance that she is with you in this moment and we can be pretty sure that she's singing in your heavenly choir. So we thank you for her life let her memory stay with us and instruct us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, Roy, would you come so we can begin the rest of our service? If you would join me in the call to worship. It's from Psalms 33. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the children of man. From where, where he, he sits, sits enthroned, enthroned he, looks he looks out on, on all, all the inhabitants of the earth. earth. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love. Our soul, our soul waits, waits for, for the Lord. Lord. He, is he is our, our help and our shield. shield. For our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your, your steadfast, steadfast love, love, O Lord, be upon, be upon us, even, even as, as we hope in you. Some of you may or may not know that Psalms was songs. These were songs. If you would bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we trust you. Our faith depends on your grace and mercy. As you look down from heaven, let your eye rest upon us with love and forgiveness. We need you as our help and shield, Father, and we trust in your steadfast love to surround us, equip us, and save us from the evils of this world. Amen. Please stand if you're able to. If not, please remain seated, of course as we sing together, Thou Art Worthy.
Dear Lord, sometimes we face disappointments and challenges that leave us worried and afraid. And when we are fearful, let us seek your strength, Lord. Keep us mindful, Lord, that you are our God. And with you by our side, Lord, we have nothing to fear. Help us to be your grateful and courageous servants this day and every day. And Lord, you have warned us that we will be judged by the words we speak. Keep us mindful. And Lord, that we have influence on many people. Make us an influence for good. And may the whole the words that we speak today be worthy of one who has saved us forever, our Lord Jesus. Amen. And Lord, be with those uh, in, our, in our area, Lord, in our city. Be with those who are keeping us safe. Be with those who are making decisions regarding our city. And be with those in, in, the, in Florida, Lord, and with those in Washington to make the right decisions to help your people in this country, Lord, be faithful and true. And Lord, we just know that there's many around this world who are hurting and not able to praise you like we are doing this morning, Lord, to gather together. And they're doing it in secret, Lord. Be with those folks, be with them, and bring change in their countries. Lord, you have so much blessed us all. And we, we're going to, Lord, speak the names of those we love and those we know and our neighbors and friends throughout the country, Lord. We want to hear those names, Lord, that you can hear them and help us with that. Yes. Yes, 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 Lord. Yes, Lord, you hear those. You hear every one. They sound a jumble to us, Lord, but you know every individual name that was spoken. You know each one of them. And Lord, we pray that you would be with them and ask you to give them your love. We ask you, Lord, to give healing where needed, to bring about change in those that need change and be with those, especially those in our family and neighbors, Lord, that you would be with them and they would know you as we know you and love you as we love you. And Lord, we thank you for that prayer that you gave us as we say together as your, your church, Lord, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory ever. Amen. Holy Spirit, God. second hymn and when I get to it it will be take my life and let it be take my Oh. 
The songwriter said, take my silver and my gold, not a mite will I withhold. We could never outgive God, but now it's our opportunity to give back to him a small portion of what he's given us. Would the ushers please wait upon us? thank you for these gifts. We ask that you would just multiply them and in your great wisdom that you would guide us in how to best use them to serve your people here and around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to be blessed by Greg's singing. Handy dandy microphone. <laughs> what are you gonna do? You gotta carry with me at all times. <laughs> Sand. Those hands 
leaves us a strong soul when life goes wrong. Put your faith in the anchor of hands. When the anchor of hands heal the sick. One pair of hands raise the dead. One pair of hands calm the raging storm. And thousands of people were fed. One pair of hands said, I love you. And those hands were nailed to a tree. Those hands are so strong, so when life goes wrong, put your faith into one pair of hands. Good advice. Those hands are so strong, so when life goes wrong, put your faith into one pair of hands. Put your faith into one pair of Thank you, Greg. Let us pray. Oh, Father, what sometimes we need to be reminded that we just need to put our faith in you to keep our eyes on you. And now, Lord, I pray that you would use these words to speak to your people, to help us to understand, to hear, and to believe the words that you share with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Do you remember when your children were small, when you told them about Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, and the Tooth Fairy? They heard your words and they believed because they trusted you. That is until some neighbor's child told them that there was no way Santa Claus could fit down through your uh, fireplace insert or your children found their baby teeth in your dresser drawer. That was the end of their trust in you and set up their teenage years. When they knew everything, you knew nothing. Their trust in our words began to disappear. That's kind of like us and God, isn't it? As a small child, we accept without question. But as we get older, and the times get tough in our lives, we find it difficult to keep that childlike attitude towards God. That loss of trust speaks to my message this morning. Hear and believe. If I ask you to consider those two verbs and to tell me what they mean to you, what would your answer be? Would you choose trust? confidence, assurance. For me, to hear and believe means to hear the truth of salvation and to believe in my heart that Jesus died for me. That is what faith is all about. Now, we can have faith in the sun, that the sun is going to come up tomorrow because it always does. I have faith in the love of my family because they've always been there. I have faith that the lights are going to come on when I turn the switch on because the electric company has been faithful in providing electricity to me. Think of all the things and people that we put our faith in every single day. Why do we find it so difficult to put that same faith in God? and in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. What is faith? 
We bandy that word around, but what does it mean? Merriam-Webster defines it this way. Faith is allegiance to duty or a person, loyalty, firm belief in something for which there is not proof, complete trust. I prefer the definition of faith as found in Hebrews 11, the faith chapter. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. So that which is seen was not made out of things that are visible. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. By faith, we are convinced of the words of scripture, that they are true. We have hope for the eternity we cannot see because the Bible tells us Jesus died to provide it for us. Faith is stepping out when we don't know where the steps will lead us, but knowing the one who guides those steps. I'd like for a few minutes for us to consider Abram. Now, Abram was a herdsman and 75 years old when God came to him and told Abram to leave his country and all his relatives and relocate to some land that God was going to give him. God said he would make Abram a great nation and bless him. We're told Abram went as the Lord had told him. Now put yourself in Abram's shoes. Can you imagine if God came to you today and told you to leave your home, to leave the United States, to leave your family behind and travel to some unknown land? What would your answer be? Would you put a for sale sign on your home? and begin to dispose of your furnishings? Or would you say, I must have misunderstood. I am too old to make such a move. My kids would think I'd gone totally around the bend. There's no way I will ever move from the United States and go to a foreign country. So here's Abram out in the wilderness. He's listened to what God told him doing the same things he was doing before God sent him to the new land. God comes to him again in a vision and promises Abram his protection and the assurance of a great reward. Now, Abram speaks more boldly because some time has passed, right? And he complains that he is still childless. Abram tells God there's no chance of parenthood. He's too old, his wife is barren, but listen to God's response. Look toward heaven and number the stars if you are able to number them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. In the next verse we read, and he believed the Lord and he counted it to him as righteousness. No evidence of restored vitality, no change in his wife, nothing to make Abram believe he would have a child. This verse is quoted four times in the New Testament to dis demonstrate faith in God. Righteousness in the Old Testament is characterized by a life lived in godly obedience. It's important to note that before Abram has proved himself righteous by deed, he is counted righteous by faith. Abram pleased God by his faith, and God promised his reward of a son. We know from other scripture that Abram becomes Abraham, has a son, and became the father of the nation of Israel. 
There are other examples throughout scripture of ordinary people demonstrating extraordinary faith. There's Joshua marching around the walls of Jericho for seven days. The woman who reached out to touch Jesus' garment so she could be healed. The friends who lowered their friend down through the roof so he could be healed by Jesus. The Roman who told Jesus he didn't need to go to his home to heal his daughter. Read Hebrews 11 for other examples of ordinary people exhibiting extraordinary faith. Biblical faith is not blind trust in the face of extraordinary evidence. It's not a leap in the dark. It's not a vague trust grounded in wishful thinking. Biblical faith is a confident and unwavering trust in the God who is all powerful, all wise, and eternally trustworthy. This is the God who revealed himself at creation, throughout his word, and in the person of Jesus Christ. This is the Jesus who promised to never leave nor forsake those who belong to him. What about us? Do we understand what it means to have faith? To have absolute confidence that something in the future, something we cannot see, but has been promised by God, will actually occur because God says he will reveal it. As we read the Bible and learn about ordinary people, people just like us, who did amazing things because of their faith, do we identify with them? Do we say, yes, I could wait 25 years for a son. I could wait 12 years to touch the master's garment. I wouldn't need to touch his wounds to believe. Or are we like Thomas, doubting until we had visual and physical proof? Like Judas, who betrayed Jesus because he didn't fulfill Judas's picture of the Messiah. Like the rich ruler who couldn't leave his possessions to follow Jesus. Like the Pharisees who were so concerned with their power and the law that they couldn't see the one who scripture had promised for hundreds of years. Where do we find ourselves this morning? Where do you find yourself? Have you heard the voice of God calling you? Do you believe these scriptures? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. For God demonstrates his own love for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The first step of faith is to hear. To hear Jesus saying to you, I'm standing at the door. If you will open the door, I will come in and dine with you and you with me. The Jesus who was there at creation, the Jesus of the cross, the Jesus who conquered death and rose to sit at the right side of God, desires relationship with each one of us. The second step in faith is to believe. Believe even when you cannot see the future. Believe in the hope that better is coming. Believe in the assurance that God is in control, even when the world seems to be falling apart. Believe that God loved you enough to send his son to die for you. So hearing and believing lead to faith. Faith begins with baby steps and grows as you rely on scripture Spend time with the Lord in prayer and experience his wonderful care for you, even in the midst 
of troubles or tragedy. Faith is recognizing that Jesus is with you at all times. He is before you to lead you. He is behind you to guard you. He is beside you to support you and comfort you. He is above you to bless you. Remember these promises. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. Please bow your head for a few moments as we consider the following questions. Have you heard the message of salvation? Do you believe God is who he says he is? Do you trust that Jesus paid for your sins on the cross? Do you know where you're going if you die tonight? If you can't answer yes to those questions, please hold up your hand. Please give us the opportunity to pray with you at the end of the service. If your faith is rusty because you haven't been ex exercising it, ask the Holy Spirit to restore the freshness of your faith. If you're strong in your faith, share it with someone this week. Don't hide your faith. Like our bodies, faith works best when it's exercised. As we reflect on our own faith journey, may we be worthy of the statement that Paul made to the Romans. I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world, or at least throughout the Lake Henry community. Amen. Greg, would you come again? And he's going to share with us what he can imagine that place in heaven might be. When I picked this song, it didn't match the message. <laughs> I apologize to her. But I realized that with Moo, it does make the message. It does fit. Okay, so somehow, I God, don't know. I don't know. God makes it work. This was picked long ago. Okay, let's try it. What it will be like When I walk By your side I can only imagine What my eyes will see When your face Is before me I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel Will I dance for you, Jesus Or an old you be still Will I stand in your presence Or to my knees will I fall Will I sing hallelujah Will I be able to sing at all I can only imagine I can only imagine I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun I can only imagine when all I will do is forever 
forever worship you I can only imagine I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel Will I dance for you Jesus you be still will I stand in your presence I doubt it and when my knees will I fall will I sing hallelujah will I be able to sing at all I can only imagine oh I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to sing at all? I can only imagine I can only imagine I can only imagine when all I will do is forever forever worship you I can only imagine can only imagine only imagine Amen 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 Thank you very much Thank And you. that's for Moo <laughs> Thank you Greg Thank you And now we come to the Lord's table this meal was instituted by our Lord as he sat in the upper room with his disciples. It was paid for by his blood. And all who believe are invited to this table. It's not a closed table. It's open to all who have heard and who believe. Please listen to this scripture. These are Paul's words. For I receive from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself. So it's important for us, before we come to the table, to confess our sins to the Lord. Let us do so. I'm 
and Christ assures us, you are forgiven. Would our servers please come? And as they come, remember, Jesus broke the bread, lifted it to heaven, gave thanks and said, this is my body broken for you. Likewise, he took the cup, looked towards heaven, gave thanks and said, this is my blood shed for you. Drink this in remembrance of me. The ushers will now direct you.
Jesus broken dream. The blood of Jesus shed for you. The body of Jesus broken for you. Please stand as we finish our service. Blessed be the tie that binds. Blessed be the tie that binds. 